Thank you, Bob. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. On this sweltering Sunday, thanks for being here today and making us a part of your, a part of your day. A couple of announcements for today. Uh, first off, um, September 8th, Rally Sunday, the big kickoff for the fall season. We're going to have uh, Kevin the Balloon Guy here again, and uh, it's going to have a nice party festival atmosphere here. So we're asking you to go out and invite some people in to check us out, check the church out, and enjoy our day of celebration. Uh, September 15th, then, will be the following Sunday. It's going to be a new member Sunday. So if there's anyone who's interested in becoming part of our church family, go ahead and contact moi, and I'll be more than happy to talk to you about uh, becoming one of us. There will be a sign-up down on the table this week. It's not up here today, but it'll be up this week. Start to plan out for the uh, fall harvest dinner, which is going to be on October 19th, a Saturday, at 5.30 p.m. We're going to have a sign-up to see if people are interested in being a part of that celebration, if they want to be uh, have dinner or something as such. We realize it's in the middle of hunting season and there's a lot going on at that time, but we kind of like that little fall celebration uh, for, for the church and anyone who's part of this church. And uh, whether you're listening online or seeing us on TV, you're all welcome to come here. So that's something we're going to do on October 19th. The sign-up will be downstairs. Uh, Probably as of tomorrow. I'll make it up tomorrow morning. And if you're interested at this point, if you're interested in going to that dinner, being a part of it, then please sign up. All right, let's go ahead and start our time of worship today. Check out the other announcements on there as they come up. Our first hymn for today is Crown Him with Many Crowns. We're just going to be singing verses 1 through 4 this morning. It's in the green hymnal, number 170. Please rise as you are able. Are known and from whom no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and Lutheran congregations in mission for Christ, I therefore declare to you, by God's power and his authority, the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord.
Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral, or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with tears. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of David. Please rise for the gospel. Routine 
seems to fill their need for reassurance. And because they have been faithful to come to church on occasion, they feel that they are all right, and they have secured a place in heaven. However, that's not the message Jesus proclaims in our gospel text for today. Jesus told the religious crowd that even those who appeared the most dedicated may actually be the last in the kingdom. And they might not even get in at all because they had too much religion and not enough relationship with Jesus. This gospel text for today is for those people who have read and sung and listened to people talk about Jesus for years but haven't actually met with him personally. For far too long, the church has claimed to be rescuing and per rescuing the perishing when all they've been doing is protecting the dying. As Jesus walked along on his journey to Jerusalem, someone asks him in verse 23, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? It may be that this man senses from what Jesus has already said about the kingdom that salvation is not going to be automatic or based on simple genealogy as some had thought. The rabbis had taught the people that God was offering salvation to all those who had been, been born part of the Jewish race. And that this gift of salvation was confirmed by the symbol of circumcision and maintained by the works of the law. The average Jew took heaven for granted because most Jewish people had held the view that all Jews, except the very worst, would get into heaven. To the Jews, they were already in the and on the inside. And a few Gentiles could get in by becoming Jews. However, Jesus then comes along and teaches over and over again that God the Father offered salvation by grace, by grace through him as the promised Savior. And the world today is just as confused as the Jews were then about how one gets to heaven. There's a growing tendency today to believe that all good people, whether or not they consider Jesus Christ to be their Savior, will be in heaven after they die here on this earth. According to the good people at the Barna Institute, 78% of the general public believe that if a person is generally good or does enough good things throughout their life, they uh, will earn a place in heaven. 78%. It would seem that the general consensus of today is that going to heaven is taken for granted just as it was for the Jews during Jesus' day. So let's take a closer look at what our Gospel text says about who actually is getting into heaven. Jesus reveals four facts about who will be with him in heaven. The first fact is, no one gets to heaven accidentally. Jesus says this in verse 24, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. The Greek word used here for to enter is the word eserkomai, which means to properly enter. So when Jesus says, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, he is not describing that a person may work their way into heaven. Rather, Jesus is stating that there is a specific and proper route by which one must enter. Now, the Greek syntax of that phrase does not put the make every effort on the enter process. But it takes the emphasis of make every effort rather on the narrow door. The key here is not the process, it's the person. The Gospel of Matthew 
also speaks of this narrow entrance into heaven in chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. This brings us to the second fact about getting into heaven, and that is the door to heaven is narrow. Let's take a look at this word narrow. It comes from the Greek word stenos, which means narrow or restrictive. It has a context of a closely defined path. And what is this closely defined path for getting into heaven? Our Lord Jesus gives us that very answer himself in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, where it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the way is narrow because that closely defined path is through Jesus and only through Jesus. It's not about being on a church membership roster. It's not about just being a good person and, and trying to do the right things. It's about Jesus and Jesus alone. He is the narrow door. Just being sincere is not enough. Just being a good person is not enough. Being religious is not enough. Yet that is what the world of today thinks and feels. A good example of this is a reaction from someone who wrote an article in a Melbourne newspaper following a uh, Billy Graham crusade in Australia. And this person wrote this. After hearing Dr. Billy Graham on the air, viewing him on television and reading reports and letters concerning him and his mission, I am heartily sick of the type of religion that insists that my soul and everyone else's needs saving, whatever that means. I have never felt that I was lost, nor do I feel that I am wallowing in the mire of sin, although repetitive, repetitive preaching insists that I do. Give me a practical religion that teaches gentleness and tolerance, that acknowledges no barriers of color or creed, that remembers the age and teaches children of goodness and not sin. If, in order to save my soul, I must accept such a philosophy as I have recently heard preached, I prefer to remain forever damned. And no doubt, God will grant this person's wish. The door to heaven is narrow. The third fact about getting into heaven is this. Not everyone is going to get into heaven. Jesus says this in the last part of verse 24. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Jesus says many will try to enter the kingdom of heaven and won't be able to. This completely destroys the idea that all, or even most, people will get into heaven. Jesus' words must have, have assaulted their ears as he said, many of you Jews will try to enter and will not be able to. Jesus uses the word many, and not just some, and this implies that a majority of those who are listening wouldn't make it. And there's a time limit on the offer of salvation, which the Lord made ominously clear. Let's take a look at verses 25 through 27 of today's text. Jesus warns this. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught on our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There's coming a day when the, the wonderful invitation of salvation will be over. For one day, the Lord of the house is going to get up from his throne 
I'm going to walk to the front door of this mansion and close that narrow door of salvation. The only opportunities for salvation are in this life. Those who seek to enter late will be told by the Lord, I don't know you or where you come from. And they will be denied entrance. Not everyone is getting into heaven. The fourth fact Jesus makes is that missing heaven will be an eternal torment. Jesus says this in verses 28 through 30. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for those who miss him. There will be unending sorrow that, that cannot be described for everyone that misses out on the glories of heaven and instead will spend an eternity in hell. Contrary to popular belief, there will be no sinful party in hell with all your other rowdy friends. Hell is no joy. Hell is being separated from God and wishing that you were not. Hell is not being in heaven and knowing that you could have. Hell is the conscious torment of the knowledge of what could have been. It will be a place where people are fully aware of what they have lost and will be forever in despair. Our gospel text for today is a warning from Jesus himself. So the question we need to ask ourselves in order for us to get through the narrow door is, do you know Jesus? Or do you just know about Jesus? After what Jesus tells us in these verses, the question now becomes, will you be among the saved? 78% of Americans expect to go to heaven when they die. However, many of them will admit that they hardly ever pray, read the Bible, or even go to church. They admit that they live to please themselves instead of God. Now, if you were to ask these people why they believed they were going to heaven, they would not know how that this was going to happen. To apply the reasoning in another area, it would busy be as if your neighbor told you, I'm going to Mars. And you would ask, how? And they'd go, I don't know. What would you think? You would probably think this, well, you'd better know how you plan on going it if you want to arrive. It's no different for getting into heaven because you won't get to heaven accidentally. The door to heaven is narrow and only through Jesus. Not everyone is getting into heaven. And if you miss getting into heaven, it will be an eternal decision that will be in torment. There's another door that Jesus speaks of in Scripture, and that's the door to your heart. Jesus says this in the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. If you haven't yet opened that narrow door of your heart to Jesus, do it now. Do it now. Don't wait until it's too late and the narrow door into heaven is closed permanently. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for providing the door to be with you in heaven. Lord God, we hear constantly from this world that there are many ways to you. But we know from your holy word that the only way, the only way to you is believing in the way, the truth, and the life that 
is through your son, Jesus. Help us, Heavenly Father, to remain strong in that truth and to not be swayed by the deceptions of Satan and this world. And it is in the holy name, the holy, holy name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Our next hymn is Faith of Our Fathers, still in the green hymnal, number 500. Maybe the first year, maybe going back. Lord, give them the strength 
It's a, it's a tough, it's a new thing, and it's a whole different ball game for them. So Lord, we're asking you to be with them. Give them strength. Let them turn to you in the times of need. And surround them with people who can still keep them connected to you. Even though there's a lot of other stuff on their mind, Lord, it's still all about you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for all those churches who are standing upon the truth that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We pray for us. We pray for saving grace. We pray for all of those churches who will not stand at any wishy-washy universalist. There's many ways to heaven. But that's only through you, Lord. We stand upon that. Give us the strength when we walk out those front doors in our mission field that we stand upon that truth that is only through you and your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for the healing of many uh, who are on our hearts now, in body and in your spirit. Those who are, who are in need of healing for their bodies. And maybe it's just something of a summer cold, but maybe it's something could be like a stage four cancer. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of spirit, healing of the spirit that are touched from, from maybe someone that they've lost recently or maybe someone who they've lost a while back and still hurts them. And we ask for your healing touch. Lord, come to all of those who are on our, heart, on our hearts at this time. Bring healing. Bring your healing touch and peace and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for healing in this nation. We've, we've turned away from you. We've turned away from all of the things that our, that our forefathers, that the people who started this nation, based this whole nation upon them. We've turned away from them. And Lord, we repent of that as a church. Father, we know in your word that if we do repent of our wicked ways and turn from all of that, that you will hear our prayers and you will heal this land. So Lord, we repent of this time. Help us, Lord, to continue to pray for this nation. Pray for all of our senators, our legislators, our, our president, everyone who is in the, the leading aspect of this nation, Lord. Help us to pray for them. And Lord, protect this nation from the evil one. And all of its deceptions and manipulations. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray especially for those who are defending this nation, all those soldiers who are fighting with, in, in danger that, that we just take sometimes this freedom for granted, Lord. And these people are on the front line fighting for those freedoms. Lord, protect them. Protect them from dangers of, of physical danger, but also from spiritual and mental dangers, too, Lord. Protect them. Bring them home. Bring them home. Reunite them with their families, Lord. And then when they do come home, Lord, press on us as a nation. Put it on our hearts. We need to protect these people. We need, we need to give them the resources that they need to get back into to society and regular life again, because they're, they're going to be messed up in their heads. May have messed up bodies, may have messed up spirits. And so, Lord, we need help to get them back on their feet again, Lord. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, Lord. These are our sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, and we need to take care of them. Put that on our hearts, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for the soldiers who are fighting in the front line for your gospel of truth. They're being attacked, too. Spiritually, but sometimes physically, Lord, bring them protection. Protect their health, Lord. Protect them from any kind of human evil or any kind of evil of Satan. And Lord, provide them with the resources that they need to do those ministries that you've called each of them to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they'd like to make at this time, please go ahead and say them. Heavenly Father, continue to be with my brother, my Jerry, and my sister, Sharon. Her as a caretaker of him and uh, his healing, Lord, and their family. Uh, stressful, uh, he's doing well, but uh, to be with them, give them special care, security. Also, uh, Jenny's brother, Gary, will have surgery this week for a shoulder. Thank you. 
you know, they're having the problems for that comfort they need, um, even though they have wonderful colleagues. To your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Those who pray for our love and those who pray for in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace of God with one another. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing our tradition of singing the Lord's Prayer on the last Sunday of the month, we'll ask you, please rise as you are able as we worship. Give thanks to God our Father and the Lord Jesus.
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.